Um, again, on this, again on this link, on this uh, link that I shared, we have folder called day one, folder called day two, folder day three, day four, day five. Ideally, this should be a five-day course if time permits. Um, and for today, we are going to have day one. So inside day one, if you open day one, you'll see several files. You'll see a folder called datasets. And if you open it, you'll see the same, uh, the same files that I've been talking about. So basically, I would like you to make sure that you have opened day one. There is a folder called lectures, or lecture, with the two PowerPoint presentations. So what I expect you to do is to open the PowerPoint presentation called Introduction to R. That is the PowerPoint that we are going to use. If time permits us, we are going to do the next PowerPoint called Data Ruggling and Cleaning. But today, for now, and we are going to open the folder called Introduction to R. That's the fold, that's the that's the PowerPoint I want you to open. And then on day one, I want you to open a file called uh, synthetic depression underscore data dot csv it does not have any other name it is a comma separated file it's a csv file a csv file looks like excel except that it ha it holds more data so if you have a lot of data then you put it in a csv file rather than an excel file so it will be nice if you open the file and uh, you will be able to see. Uh, so Joel, you can confirm that you're seeing my screen. Yes, we can see a screen and hear you clearly. Yes, so the screen is here and uh, I will give more details about this file. Uh, so this file is going to have ID numbers. This is, these are patients. These are participants who are enrolled in a particular study. And there are so many participants. Who can tell me how many records are in this file? Just, just to make sure that we are on the same page. Who can tell me or who can, uh, com who can confirm the number of records in this file called synthetic depression underscore data? Ten thousand. Sanita is saying ten thousand. Who else? Somebody has raised their hand. Amfrey Makudi. So, uh, Joel. Joel. Abdullah. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was on a call. Uh, okay. I missed that. Okay. No worries, uh, 10,000 observations and 23 variables, uh, exactly. So people are able to see uh, the number of uh, records in this file. And uh, if you notice that uh, the first column is ID numbers, the next column is sex of the participants, the next column is the age of the participants, the next column is having the income T1. So these participants were observed repeatedly. So the first time they were asked how much income and that's what we are calling in uh, income underscore one, income underscore two. This is the first time, time, time one, income time point one, employment status time point two, employment time three, and then we have stress. Uh, there's a column called stress. So you will see stress one, stress two, stress three. Stress three. Uh, and then you will see other things. Mental health score. There's uh, some numbers there. 
Uh, Sir Edward, Edward can only see 200. So Edward, you need to check your file. Uh, then there is a, so there is M mental health underscore score time point one, time point two, time point three. And then you have other, other records here. Uh, you will also see T3, T1, T2, T3. Then there's a variable called depression time one, depression time two, depression time three. Okay. So if you are able to see that file, that's good enough. Uh, so I want you to open this file called, uh, of course, um, those of you who want to check the materials, there's another file here called R summary sheet. This is just a handout you can read at your own time. It, it has, some of the basic commands that you can use uh, at your own time. Uh, there is another document here, large document called R using R Studio for data management. So some of you want to get to learn R at your own pace, you can use this material here. Um, then there is some additional handouts are there, the same handout. And so we shall be using the lecture and the data set. So make sure these things are downloaded on your computer. And that's what you're going to use. Additionally, I would like you to open R on your computer. So just uh, for you now to have R, we had given you a link. And if you don't have R, just just let us know, but there is a, a link that was shared. Uh, there's a link here which was shared. These are probably older versions of R. So if you have a higher version, the better. Uh, 4.3.0. So R has got two, the two app, app, apps that you need to install. The first one you need to install uh, R, point, R language, which is the foundation of R. And then, so R language is mine is 4.3.0, but the current version is 4.3.3. Uh, there are some people who are going to install, this is a window-based uh, application, but there are others who are going to install uh, R versions, which, uh, you know, which relates to uh, MacBook or, or App or Apple App softwares. Uh, don't install this one, just look for the latest one. And if you want to know the latest, once you install one of these, uh, this is the R language, then you install this one called the R Studio. So the R Studio will be embedded on top of R language. This is a studio, that means it is something that makes, uh, it's an interface that helps us to access files more easily. But these ones are the language, so you install only one of them or get the latest version. And if you want the latest version, I have shared a link here. Uh, this Mine is even low version. But if you go, if you go to the, the, the website, you will be able to see uh, our package. You can see here, on this website, we have R, download R. So you can always copy this address, you can put it on the chart. Some of you don't have R. So the first thing you do is to download this and install, and then you'll, you'll also download the R Studio. So the R Studio, you will get it from this other link, which I can put on the chat for some of you who wants to install it. So don't install the studio first, install the R. So you'll see the R studios are here. Let me put it on the chat again.
So someone is saying they don't see the data. Uh, Uh, some of you are not seeing the data sets, but let me share a link. So if you click day one, you should be able to see. Let me just share the link for day one. You should be able to see all your data sets. So I have shared a Google Drive. Don't please don't delete the files. Just when you have clicked, I've shown you day one. Uh, the last link there is day one. So when you click day one, all the files are here. Data sets. Uh, you can be able to see. So I want us now to go and open R and uh, open your R. So go to your computer and uh, click R Studio. Open R Studio. So you must make sure that it is R Studio. Let me just, uh, if I do, a, I think I need to share the entire screen. Okay, which is fine. So I want us to go to our computers and type R Studio and open R Studio. So if Oh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I think studio uh, and I can. So, sorry, Vere. I think the link you sent, you were sending only to host and but panelists. Would you kindly? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yes, okay. share to, with okay, everyone. Sorry. Yes. So that one. Okay. Sorry. So let me just share the one. So day one, the link I shared is a share copy link. I come to participants in this. Um, in the chat, you select everyone. You go to the chat box. You in the chat? Paste, uh -huh. Yeah, paste it, but if two, oh, you select to everyone. Yes. Oh. Thank you. So I've said that. Uh, and then but then you can also if you want to get all the files okay I was also showing you the link to the studio you go to the chart R Studio, I have put the link there. Then uh, now for the other one is so the latest R is four point three point three. Let me just share again on the chart. So the last the last link I have shared. So start with the last one, which is called the the R language download 4.3.3. Those we can't download it now because we expected you to have downloaded it, but you can download it as we go on 4.3.3, and then you download R Studio. So you download the two softwares, starting with the R, then the Studio because the studio is going to sit on top of our language. And then uh, for those who don't have the data set, uh, I don't know if it's allowed, but I can post this data set on your, on your whether it can go to chart. Yeah. 
let me see. Chat. I've also shared the, the data on, on chat. And then this lecture, I also want to put it on chat. So the lecture we are going to use is on, on, on chat and it's called introduction to R, but I would like you to open R. So Joel, what are you seeing on my screen? Uh, currently we are seeing uh, uh, the screen on uh, Drive. Drive? Yes, on R, APHRC, yes, there. Oh, so I can share R, let me see. Uh, what about now? We are on R now, R Studio. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the first time you open R, you should be able to see a screen that looks like this. Mine is still very old version. Don't worry, I will update it. Uh, I will update it and I know how to update it. Of course, it won't update now but there's a package called install R that can help me to update it. I won't do it now because it won't change anything in our presentation. So when you open R, this is what you see. You see an interface that looks like this. Uh, you can resize this, the, the interface. And uh, when you look at it, there is a what we call the R console down here. This is like place where you're going to type your commands uh, the first time. This is, You can use this before you go to the actual script. Uh, so here you will be able to see uh, uh, an, uh, an something blinking and then on your right, you'll be able to see global environment is another space. So the global environment here on the right this is where you are going to see the files. Once you import the data or the files, you are going to see your files here. And any data that you're working with will be available, will be shown on the global environment here. Then on the top bottom here, uh, you will be able to see, uh, you can be able to see your files. Under files here, this is just files that are in your computer. Uh, I have files in my computer, so, R is able to link me to my files. And then there's a button there called plots. Uh, plots now, when we are going to draw graphs, we are going to draw pie charts, bar graphs, very nice graphs. We are going to see them popping up here on the plots. And then there is a file here called packages. And uh, these packages is also a shortcut to installing uh, various packages. Sometimes uh, the, the studio allows you, so if you click on install, you must have internet. It tells you to search for the particular package that you want to install, uh, or you can actually uh, update. So the button update can also update for you automatically any, any package that uh, is available. It can ask you to select or select one or select all that is your choice. Uh, don't install now. You have help, uh, under help, these are materials that you can use. You can read them through uh, at your own time. Viewer and presentations. Uh, so this is how R Studio R looks like. Uh, so what we have down here is called the R console. Uh, um, I want you guys, there's one particular window that uh, you're not seeing here. So you should be having one, two, three, four windows. Now I have three. I have this, this console here. I have actually four, you need five. So you see up here, uh, you'll be seeing your results coming out, replacing this all this text. And down near where it, the cursor is blinking, you'll be able to see this way you will type some commands. On the right hand side is a global where you'll see your files and down here you'll do able to see several things either graphs or you can install packages and you can do other things something unique about what is on the right is there's a new button here called import data set 
And uh, the reason this is good is because that the studio, the studio has brought in a, a shortcut of importing files. So you can see, you can import a text file, you can import a CSV. So the second one is what we are going to use to import our file. You can import an Excel file. You can import SPSS file. You can import from SAS. You can import data from Stata. So this is just a shortcut that has been created for us. But if you click on file and you say new file, you will see a new script, R script. And I will explain later what R script is. Uh, R script is, the, <clears throat> those are the codes that we are going to run. We are going to write commands. We are going to write uh, programs. We are going to program. And if you want to save those programs for, for future use, then we are going to write them on a script. Uh, and I want you to click on a new file and then go under R script and you'll be able to see a new, new, a new interface. Uh, so therefore you have how many screens? You have one on the left, which is called the R script uh, editor. So this is place where we are going to type so many things. These are the commands. And uh, uh, of course, down here, we also have what we were calling the R console. Now we have one, two, we have how many windows here? We have one for writing commands on the console. We have another screen here for outputs. So we have two, we have two windows here. One, two, then the, this one is three. Four, five. Can you confirm that you have five, five, five windows on your R? So, Sir Edward, uh, I only have R without file. There's no file. When you open R, I've just said open R. There's no file. There's nothing in R. So, how many are seeing five windows? If I see a few, a few yeses. Yes, we can see the, the the same screen as you. Can see the same screen as me. Yes. Now, now that you can see this screen, uh, I'm going to now open up the PowerPoint that uh, I had prepared. So I'll be using a PowerPoint and we'll be going back to that art, art screen. So Joel, can you see my screen? Yes, uh, we still can see your art screen. Okay. Yes. How about now? Yeah, we are back to your presentation in full screen. Thank you. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, so this is just, we are going to, so this is the course outline that we have. We are going to talk about introducing art studio. Um, then R and R Studio, we are going to talk about data ruggling and cleaning. Um, data ruggling and cleaning is basically if there is problem with the data, you want to explore, understand how many observations were there, how many participants, what is the average age, uh, are they missing data in the file? Um, do you want to merge several files together? Uh, is the date format correct? Is your data numbers, want them, so that's called data ruggling. And it's also called data cleaning. That just to make sure you prepare the data in a format. Sometimes you have numbers like age of participants and you want to create uh, different categories of age. So you go and do data management or what we call data ruggling. Uh, then we shall explore the data. That means we are going to run some few basic uh, uh, analysis like descriptive statistics. We are going to run a bivariate analysis, like for example, so for example, descriptives, we will run the mean, the median, uh, the percentages. Uh, we are going to run, then uh, we are going to uh, explore the data. We, we can plot graphs just to see whether what the data is looking like. Um, then we will look at the data types. We look at the data types. Uh, 
and the structures, data types, so which kind of data set. Yeah, then we are going to talk about the MIDI, mean tests. Uh, later on, we are going to look at how can we compare the means of groups, uh, like test, doing a t-test. How can we compare medians of several groups, uh, those non-parametric tests. And then we are going to look at tests of associations. How can we uh, relate variables? Like if you want to do factors associated with the depression, or factors that are associated with stress. Uh, then we are going to do that. Uh, then we are going to have opportunity to do regression analysis. We will have something like linear regression. We will have something like uh, logistic regression. And we, if we have time, we can do other types of regressions, Poisson regression, negative binomials. Uh, um, and we will learn more. We can do many other things uh, and graphs. So that is basically what we will try to do. Uh, uh, so today's session, basically, we want to do these activities. We want to be able to get data uh, started with R Studio. We want to import data, what we are calling reading and viewing data in R. We want to install packages. Uh, and uh, later you'll understand that R requires uh, some packages. It doesn't just know what you want to do. So every activity, every procedure you want to do, you need to install uh, an, a, a specific package. Um, then we will create objects. Uh, we look at data types, and we are going to explore this data, sort data, you know, understand the variables, uh, the, what is a data frame. And we are going to import the data into R, and then that will mark the end of our training today. And then once we import that data, then tomorrow we can start working on other types of analysis. So we are going to access R. I already have told you to open R Studio. Um, then we shall look at the menus. We shall look at commands, how you can exit R. So basically, this slide is talking about R. So where did R come from? R basically is a, uh... so Joel, would you like to see the video or it disrupts, is disruptive? No, I think it's, it's better. <laughs> You're getting even the, okay. yeah, it's good. Yeah, so R is a, a statistical package uh, that is, uh, has been developed uh, by, you know, it was developed, I think either 1992, uh, by some two statisticians, they came up with this free software. Uh, and uh, I think one is called Rose, uh, and then another one is called, uh, I think, uh, who was the other one? Rob is it Robert? So these guys uh, came up with this software, and they were building on another software, which was called S. And uh, R is not like any of the other softwares. You know, we have SPSS which has got a menu. For example, in SPSS, SPSS is another software called Statistical Package for Social Sciences. You can actually click and uh, see options where you can say, I want to run this analysis. It gives you several options. But, and uh, softwares like Stata are commercial. You pay for them and, uh, you know, they also have menus. You can say, click uh, statistics, uh, and then it gives you a list of statistical tests, maybe mean, medians, uh, any other statistical test is listed under a commercial package. When you see a software like statistical analysis software like SAS, uh, you know, it's like R. And there are those other commercial softwares, which we call the menu-driven uh, softwares. But R is a command-driven software. So like, if you have R and you have SAS, this is a command driven. What do we mean by command driven? We mean that you will be writing statements, you will be writing commands that will be executed to produce outputs. But you will not know in advance. You know, you may not know. The R will not give you uh, the option of which command should you run. 
So basically, the problem that uh, people who want to use R have is that they don't know statistics. People have a problem with statistics. So if you don't know anything about statistics uh, and then you want R to do for you something, then R might disappoint you. It, you have to go and read it somewhere and then come and implement it in R. So, and then the second problem with R is that it is, a, it is difficult to learn R. Uh, people say that it's a, long, a steep learning curve. So you need to be very patient when you are being taught R. Uh, it's not a very, some people, some people just feel it is difficult. Uh, and many people give, give up. Personally, when I started working with R, I really hated R because I liked I liked I liked uh, SPSS before, and I liked Stata because I was seeing things that I can easily click here and there. But I learned later on that R is so powerful that anything in this in this environment of data science I, I can use R. I can draw GIS. I can do economic evaluations. I can do mathematical modeling. I can do statistics. I can do many things. And then I realized that R has got the best graphs, you know, very nice graphs. I only compare these graphs with the, with the Excel that I, I use. But learning R requires patience. And that's why today we cannot even do much. We, we have to make sure that you're comfortable and uh, we have, you have to be taught R in a very basic way. Uh, for you to master R. And then now I've said, if you open R, you will see the script window. This is where we are going to write our commands for storage. Uh, this is the global environment where you're going to see your data files here. This is the R console. It has got a, an output window and it has, it has got a console. And then you have the another window here for files directory. The difference between the R console down here and the R script is that commands that you write under the console down here on the bottom left, all these commands will disappear the moment you close R. You'll not be having opportunity to, to see them again. But the, once you write on R script here, you can actually save them and reuse them several times. So the R script is a very good place to write your commands. This one down called R, R console is just for temporary use. Um, and so, and then on top, once you open any files, you'll see what you have opened up there. On top here, you can see R menus. You can see a file, edit, code, view, plots, session, uh, build, um, whatever, profile tools. Um, and if you click on tools, you will be able to see uh, global options where you'll be able to see which version you're using. But also here, uh, you can see the version of R that you're using. Now, if you open R, you will be able to see uh, a series of menus. There's file option, there is edit option, code option. So when you click on file, I want you to click on file, open your R, open your R, Open your R, and when you click on File, I want you to click on File. Um, Joel, are you able to see? Yes. Yeah, so when you click on File, there is this button. There is many things. If you see File, New File, you can see R script. Of course, you need to open R script because we are going to use it. But there are so many other things here. There is something called R Markdown which is an important tool. That markdown is, you're like creating a semi-software where once you write all your procedures, once you write all your procedures, R and you, you put it as R markdown, when you click on it, it's just like a, it runs everything uh, for you. Then R can also use a C++ file, R markdown, Python can be uh, linked. It can be linked to an SQL script. It can be linked to a website development platform or an HTML or Swift and other things. Some people use R to develop websites. Others use it for other many other things. 
uh, we are just going to use it for statistical packages. So again, if you click on a, a file, uh, you can always start a new project if you want. Uh, we don't want to start the project now. Uh, I don't want us to start the project now, uh, but if you click file, you can see import data set. Import data set. See? So this is where we are going to import the files. And maybe for a, a practice, uh, make sure your internet is on. I wanted you guys to click on this file, I mean, import data set, and then go to the second row from, it's called from text read R. Can you click on that? If you click on that, you will be able to see a window for importing a file. So maybe we will not go back to this, but this is a shortcut for importing the, the data into your file. So we will cancel that. Uh, so I'll go back to uh, my R looks outdated. Is there a way I can download a, a new one? Yes, so you, if you want to download new R, you just go to the link that we have shared. Uh, you go to the website, and then you download R version 4.3.3. The studio is the same. You don't have to import studio, but the R language 4.3.3, you can, you can uninstall the one you have and you install uh, a new version. Or there is a way you can install a package called install R, and uh, you install R package that can also update your R studio, R R R R software. Uh, who else is saying anything? Share the link again. So Joel, you can share those those links with those on the chat. Okay. And uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint uh, presentation. And then under edit, these are just visual functions that you will read at your own time. This is a very important slide, and I want you to be very keen on this one. These are just uh, operands, uh, common, common operands that we use when you're using R, just like if you're using any other language. There's this percent symbol, and this is used to, if you say, uh, you can give, you can say if A and B, if variable one, if age is this and sex is this, you use this symbol, upper sign. You don't use this. And then there is an equal sign, means to assign. So one equal sign is to assign variables, is to change uh, the existing uh, variable to a new thing. We call it one equal sign. So don't think that this equal sign is going, is, is going to isolate. For example, if you want to say where age is 20, you can't use one equal sign you'll use two equal signs because it says uh, it's a filter. Double equal sign is like a filter. So if you say, select all women, sorry, for all female records, then you say where uh, sex is equivalent. I call this one equivalent. Double equal sign. Uh, select where gender is equivalent to, uh, to male. You use this. But when you say uh, assign value four, to, to this, you use one equal sign. Then you have a minus, plus, greater than, less than, greater or equal to, less or equal. Those are things you know. But there is this one I want you to note, the, the one with exclamation mark and followed by an equal sign. This one is helping you to ex exclude. For example, you want to say, select where uh, records are not missing, not equal to. See, that means you want, if you put this command, it's going to exclude or remove uh, records that are, are followed. If you say remove anything with 99, so you say where age is not equal to 99, that means all 99s will be excluded. So this is not equal to. Then you have this pipe, particle pipe. 
this is very important because this is what you are going to use to say or yeah where age is 20 or 30 where 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 income is this or this you're going to use this particle pipe and then this is an exponential this hat you say raised to power something if you want to say two raised to power three we are going to do that say one raised to power four or you can use the double stars to do to do to, to, to do that and uh, we are going to do a few things on help and tabulations and then when you want to quit r you can write q and then you exit uh, i want us to come back to that um, and i want you now to go back to r studio and uh, so uh, And I want you to go back. Joel, can you see my studio? No, we are, uh, I think we just lost it. We are still in the PowerPoint. Okay. But we saw it loading. Yes, yeah, now it's good. Yeah. So um, one thing, one thing with the, sorry. One thing with the R, I want you to put a hashtag. I want you to put a hashtag. Uh, uh, on the R script and uh, the R script there is hashtag is to put comments, your notes. They just say something like, uh, uh, just write something like introduction to R. So you can see that uh, it's going to turn, it's going to turn green. See, so you can see it's going to turn green. Uh, so we want to try several things. I want you to try, I don't know whether we start from down here or just on the console. I want you to write something like two plus five. I want you to write something like two plus five. And in the R script here, there is a command here for run run this one written run so when you when you type something here you can highlight that row you can highlight that row when when what you want to do is highlighted when you highlight you can either click the row the ones that are uh, the, if you write a hashtag and you write anything after the hashtag it's not going to be executed it's just your notes Introduction to R. So just write two plus five, then highlight, and then click this command called run. And look at what happens on the app. The answer is there. Uh, I also want you to write two times five. Highlight and then click run. I want to see how many have done that. So R R R R R this this thing is now like a a, a lap and it, uh, it's working like a, a calculator. Who has done it? Anyone who has uh, typed? Yes, it's showing on the console. Yeah, manage good. And Fiona, the chat, we see, see Fiona, La Mesa, Great. Martin, Hillary, Roslyn, uh, who else? Alpha, Joanne, very good. Christine has done it. Betty, wonderful. Now you can now see that uh, uh, R can do uh, several things. Now uh, I want us to do another activity. So now I want to go back to the PowerPoint presentation and just show you uh, what the activity. So this is what we want us to do. Joel, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah, so for I want us now to, you can see this is called, uh, 
you can see this one is called uh, we want to create some objects now so you have been typing so there's a way uh we can assign some values so let me just uh, for example we can assign you can create something called a container a container think of a basket uh, which has got a uh, deep number so there's a basket here called a container with, with one two and three so this c here is a container so it just tells us that there's a container with numbers one two three and this symbol here less less and dash is a sign it, you can also put an equal sign so we want to say we come up with a a, a label you know, like a, a label for this basket we call it like let's call it y and you are saying y is going to be assigned numbers a is a y is a container of one two three uh, that means y it contains these three numbers and uh, you can also see down here if you come up with a label an object you know we call this one an object when you come up with an object and you call it colors you can call it anything you can call it your name you can say vincent is assigned is a container is is assigned uh, these contents blue red and black and then we want to observe what vincent is so i want you to go back to your console uh sorry i think uh what has happened uh yeah we lost your presentation we are sharing and then yeah. there is a question on the chat mm -hmm. uh who is asking let me see uh, how uh, do we get there file? is a type sorry that there is a that there is a tab next to run which looks like learn what is it that looks like learn next to learn run. the other one yeah so this one is rerunning our previous code don't use this one uh let us concentrate on the first one run the current line or selection this one right these ones we will learn later how to go back my my r only show one window that is r console uh ishmael your r is only showing the console go to click click please, on file please. sorry sorry it's because he is on r he's not on he's r, on r. Studio. so ismail ismail you are on the wrong software so just close that r and look for something called open r studio on your screen on your can we also enter use enter instead of run yes uh some people who are very good already know some shortcuts so but for learners people who are learning today we are just going to highlight arrow and we click run uh, of course on the r console down there you can you press the enter key uh, at the bottom here if you write anything at the bottom you can press enter no, key no. like if i say two plus five and the console and i press enter key it gives me the result but when you are writing on the r script up here you just highlight and click run. Is there a shortcut to writing a sign function? Uh, we, <laughs> it depends on your keyboard. Uh, so uh, I want us to, can you put, can you write hashtag and just say assigning object contents to objects? Just write some hashtag and put your comments there. I want us to as create an object like a, a, a label, something. And we when you want to write the assign, you put you put the less than equal sign and you put a dash, or you can write equal sign. But I like this one. So it depends on your first training. I'm not seeing your screen. With, with, uh, Sorry, we can see a screen, maybe on his you side. You can screen, so you can ask Nando 
look at what is happening then. I want us to assign, we are going to create something called Y and we are going to assign. So less than equal sign and you put the dash. I want us to assign Y and type C. When you type C, you are trying to say you are creating a container and put, put, put open in bracket. So R is going to work with closing open and closing bracket. So just click the opening bracket symbol. And then R is going to have opening and closing bracket. So that is how R works. Everything you are going to write inside that those brackets. So assign Y to a container with then type one comma two comma three. That means Y is going to contain one, two, three and then highlight, and then click run. That is when you, when you highlight and you click run, it's going to execute. So you're requesting R that create a contain something, call it Y, and inside Y, put one, number one, number two, number three. There could be three balls. And uh, once you do that, uh, and you want to see or confirm what is inside there, your next row, you just type Y. Just type Y and then you highlight Y and you click run. When you when you when you put Y, R, R already knows that uh, uh, you highlight that Y and you say run. It's going to, if you look at the console down here, R is going to show you what is inside Y, which is one, two, three. I want to see who has done that. Well, well, wonderful. I'm seeing so many people saying, but somebody called, uh, yes, Adisu, uh, that's good. Christine, Crispin, Okanda, Irene, that's very good. Uh, very good, very good, very good, very good, yeah, very good. Now, we want to do something else, and we are going to follow what is on the PowerPoint. So if you look at slide number 12 of we want now to do colors. Uh, I want you to put a container called colors, and I want you to put uh, inside the container, I want you inside the container, I want you to put blue, red, and black. Uh -huh. So can somebody tell me how to do it? I want you to create a container called colors, an object called colors, something, call it colors, and assign it to a container. C, yeah, somebody, and then put the opening and closing bracket. And inside that object called colors, I want you to put uh, three things, put some things, maybe balls, they could be balls. I want you to call it blue, but this time, because they are not numbers, we are going to put them in brackets. Put something called blue, and it will show you blue, comma, uh, which color do we write? Uh, maybe blue, maybe write a color of your choice. You can put red in quotes because these are strings, these are not numbers. And then maybe put double quotes and put black. And R is now very good because R, when you try to type a color, R is going to give you those colors. You can see I'm creating a container called colors, an object called colors, and inside colors, I'm putting this contents, blue, red. And if I want to see what is inside, whether R has the right things, I will just type the word colors. And when I highlight R colors, I run, it will show me uh, some things there. So can you do that? Uh, somebody has a comment, colors black, yes. Then you can run colors and it will give you some things. You can also do that. Uh, now we go to our PowerPoint. Uh, uh, now 
let's go to PowerPoint again. Uh, I want to share the PowerPoint again, just to, so that one is just assigning some things, but we shall continue with that. Uh, can you create, can you create a container called fruits? And uh, can you create a container called fruits? And inside fruits, can you put two things? Put banana and put apple. I want you to do the first one. Write something called fruits. And then inside fruits, assign it to uh, contain banana and apple. I want to see who has done it. And then you, you, you run fruits. Then you say fruits. Who has done it and who is seeing banana, apple, somebody else there, yeah, good. Good, very good. Now I want to give you another activity. I want to give you another activity. I want to give you another activity. Uh, let me just go to my R again. Uh, where is it? My R studio again. Now I want you to. I want you to do another activity. Uh, I want you to create something called X. I want you to assign X to a number. Let's say five. Assign X to five. And and uh, and then I want you to assign. <clears throat> something like uh, Z, assign it to uh, six. So run those ones in a row. So put X, assign five, put Z, assign it to six. And then I want you to now calculate the following. I want you to calculate for me uh, X times X times Y. So, X assigned to five run. Y uh, sorry Z assigned to six run. When you run, you see down there on the console, you'll see your output. So I want somebody to do now. Once you run those ones, R is remembering that that X has been assigned value five. X is equals to five. Z has been assigned six. So anytime I'm I'm asking X times y, what will happen? So I want somebody to tell me what is x times y. What do you get when you say x times and times, you put a star. So you highlight x times y. I want somebody to run that and tell me uh, who has gotten the right answer. Uh, Vitalis, uh, you can, uh, Joel can share, send you the PowerPoint. x plus times five, uh, I don't know if you run, sorry. It is X times Z, eh? X times Z. What about X? What about X divided by Y? What do you get? Somebody has raised their hand. Who is this? Uh, how do we get the file you shared on Google? Joel will help you. So you can always, Joel is here to help us. Yes, I've, sh I've shared just the link. Uh, here goes the links again. I'm putting them in the chat. Okay. I think this is... I want somebody to tell me uh, X divided by Y. X divided by Y, what is the answer? X divided by Y. Somebody is saying answer is 30. Yeah. Forget about Y. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, X divided by Z. Not X divided by Y. X divided by Z. X divided by Z. Because Y was, a, was 0. Point. Somebody is saying 0. 0.3. Uh, let me check. X divided by Y. 
is 0 0.3, correct? Huh? Ah, yeah. I want somebody to show me uh, x raised to power 3. x, x, x raised to power 3. So it is x, you put the heart. I don't know how your, your keyboard looks like, but there's a heart. x raised to power 3 means x times x times x. So can you do x raised to power 3? You'll get what? So it's x hat 3. So, uh, who has done it? Once you download the R in desktop, how does one open it in R? Once you download the R in desktop, once you download, so I don't know what Anonymous is asking. What you you inst you download two softwares. One is called the R language 4.3.3. Then there's the R Studio, you install it. Once you install the two softwares, you go to your computer and you open one called R Studio. From your start button, open R Studio. That's where we are. Now R raised to power three is. Okay. 125. Good. Now you are good. Now, I want you to do the exercise in the PowerPoint. I want you to go to your PowerPoint and let us go back to our PowerPoint. And I want you to now to do the fruits. Somebody, we had done fruits, but you can do fruits. Uh, so we have. Basically, we have characters where you can put characters. You can also assign numbers. You can also put uh, other things. So for today, uh, I wanted us to learn that a bit. Now let's go on. Let us go to this slide again. This slide is showing us how to practice R. Now, this is called a vector. So I want you to write W, assign it to one to one, 10, run and see what you get. Assign W to one to 10. That means you want an array. It's called a one dimensional array from one to 10. So when you do that, you type W, who has, can you run this? I'm getting feedback that the object X is not found. What can be the problem? you must go back and run X, run it again. So make sure X is assigned to something and then you highlight and you run. That's when X will get a value. Before you write sign X to anything, it will tell you that X has nothing. Very good, Gitari uh, can see, Gitari has done it. I'm checking your charts to see who has done W. Roslyn has done it, good. Uh -huh. Six participants have raised their hands. Abigail has done it, great. Uh, Charles has done it, great. This, very good, you see? So R is not as difficult as people say. Uh, I think those people, we don't have them here. Those people who are saying R is difficult, uh, we don't have them today. Thank you, problem solved. You see, the people saying R is hard, they are not here today. Sorry, my R studio has no run menu. <laughs> Adi, uh, uh, how? See, how? It does not have a R. Do you have a R studio? No, R script. So make sure that you have R script where you go to R, you open file, and then say new script. Once you say new script, you'll have an R script window and you'll see the run button there. Then now let's go to matrices. Uh, when you want to have a matrix, and what is a matrix? A matrix is just a table with you know rows and columns. See? So I want you to put Z 
Now, remember we are putting Z and there was another Z. So what happens with R, it remembers the last command, the latest command that you have run. So if I run Z again, it will just remember the last one, uh, this one I'm assigning. If I had assigned Z to something earlier and I run this current one, it will only remember the, the last one. So until you run, uh, Yes, please confirm. Yeah, it is. It is W. Assign it. It is assigned one. It is not negative one. Nora, it is not negative one. It is assigned that symbol, or you can put an equal sign. Good. Now I want you to put a matrix. Put Z. Assign Z to matrix. Uh, from one to nine, and then the number of rows put equals to three. So say Z, assign it to our matrix, and then put a bracket and say, I want you to use one numbers one to nine. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want numbers from one to nine, and I want three rows. That means it's going to be three rows, one, two, three. So nine numbers are going to be distributed in three rows. I see Eunice has done it. Very good. Well, I want to see five people. I want to see five people. Very good. Yes. So, uh, yes, I want you to try the one on the right-hand side. Now we are assigning Y to an array. It will do more or less the same thing. But this time, we are specifying that we want a three by three. So you put a Y. Instead of matrix, just call it an array. So it will still go from one to nine, comma. This time, call it dimensions. 3 by 3. Dimension equals to 3 by 3. So can you write what is on the right? Don't put that, that greater than sign. You just, because that one is what the console does. We are writing on the script window. So just say y is assigned to an array from 1 to 9. And the dimension is equals to 3, contain 3 by 3 matrix. I want to see anybody who has done it. Ronald, good. Ronald has done it. Very good. So Joel, yes, uh, this is. Uh, I want to hear somebody's voice. Uh, anybody who is there, okay. let me hear one or two people. Yes, we can unmute those ones who are, uh, especially anybody those ones who are raising their hands to say something so that we hear your voice. Who has successfully um, done it? Who is happy? Who is not happy? Let's hear. I've unmuted uh, Beatrice Magia Madeg uh -huh. Madeg. Can you yeah, speak? It is yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, it is it is it is actually exciting. I'm happy that I I've, I've been able to do. Thank you. Okay, another person, maybe a gentleman. Yeah, I'm uh, unmuting Enoch Ngetich. Kindly speak. Yeah, they have raised. They have. There are eight people who have raised their hands. Probably. Yes. Allow um, them. To, uh, yeah. uh, thank you, Joel. I'm um, uh, Samuel. Where? Someone, yeah, um, Vincent, you are somewhere, yeah, Vincent. Yes, yeah, yeah. thank you. have been able to follow, yeah. you and uh, I'm enjoying the, the experience. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, uh, Joel, someone has raised their hand. Yes, uh, I arose Samuel Solomon Medina. Kindly unmute. I'm not happy. Can we hear from <laughs> Charles? 
Caio. Ok, let me unmute you, Charles. Charles, uh, Charles is let us... uh, Charles is the, Charles is distressed, so let's help Charles. <laughs> uh -huh. Charles, can you say something? Uh, unmute, Charles. Charles, I have unmuted you kindly. Uh, yes. What I'm getting is an error unexpected in Z. Uh, that's the first one. And in the second one, too, I'm getting an expected assignment in Y. I can't hear Charles well. I don't know. Are you able to hear what he's asking? Okay. Repeat again, Charles. Yeah, just speak louder. Uh, it's just that we can't hear you clearly. Charles oh, is getting an error message. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. clear. All right. Uh, what I'm getting is the error unexpected assignment in Y. What is the question? I can't get it. So he say that he he say he get um, an error message, and the message is unexpected error in Y. Oh, in Y. Hmm. Has he put two equal signs? So let me see. If, uh, who has been able? Yeah, somebody has done Y well. You can can see here. Uh, uh, somebody here has done it well. Uh, who is this? This is Alpha Omalu. Roslyn has done it. Yeah. Yeah. So just check the the brackets. Sometimes you are supposed to have another bracket. You forgot, and R will always remind you where the error is. Yes. Somebody in order has done why Unis has done it. Uh, and yeah, and you can always reach out uh, even after this session. You can uh, you can always write an email, and uh, we can. There's a chat there, or, and you can always chat. I'm also in your WhatsApp group. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, now we want to we want to do another one, uh, another activity. I'm still having errors, so just just check just check that you run the the code well. The, the the check the PowerPoint that you have shared. So we want to go to another activity. This is just a creating another object uh, using a command list, and this time the list command is going to have like options. So you create a, an object called something like my my list or my underscore list, assign it to a list, and then inside the list, you can say the name is joy, favorite color is pink, age is 22, and the hobby is coding. So I want you to create a list. What is the difference between Z and Y? The outputs look the same. The output looks the same because the next time you run Z, remember when you run, I told you that when you run Z, you have had several Zs already. There's a Z that you assigned earlier, and there's another Z you are assigning. You will remember the, the latest one you have run. So depends on what you are running for Z. If Z is assigned five, and initially you had assigned it R to three, and you run a, a Z equals to five, it will only remember the last one. And Y is the last Y you assign. If you're not sure, you run you run Z again, you run Y again. And then you get the latest. Uh, I want us to do this activity I call listing. Create an object. This is my list, my underscore list. You can put your name if you want. You can say Vincent is assigned to a list. And then in a bracket, you can say the name is Joy. Or you can say the name of this person is Joy. Favorite color, you can say fab underscore color. This is also another object, object within an object. Favorite color is pink. 
why are we not using not having a container in the list we are not having a container because the word we are using the the c now is the command is list so it's not going to put everything uh it, the output is not going to come up uh, as combined it's going to separate them so the con the container c is going to produce an output which is together but the list has will put them as separate just going to have them as separate so i want somebody to do this my list and then now when you want to when you want now to see what is inside you can pick one of them you can just say dollar sign name and it will tell you the name of the person dollar sign favorite color dollar sign age dollar sign hobby and it will give you what is inside i want i want to Uh, so let me go to my R studio. Or, or I just show you this. Uh, uh, some of you are looking at my screen. How can I append another row to my list? <laughs> we are going to do that uh chanel chanel the next activity we are just going to under data frames uh so so for so chanel you can do the next activity down here um but i want to see who has done this my list assign it to a list of things Anytime you are typing a string variable, which is not a number, you put it in quotes. Coding, I see somebody has done it. Somebody has done it. Dollar sign name is joy. Uh, favorite color is pink. My, the age is, is 22 years. Uh, hobby, dollar sign hobby. Abigail, thank you. Uh, I've seen you've done it. Uh, Charles. Wow, done. Teresia, done. Yes. I want to give you some few minutes to see anybody else who has done it. Yes. Good. Crispin Uma Nyango has done it. So you, you can appreciate the what you write on the left-hand side of this assignment. This is like a new name. You want to create an object and give it a new name. And when we are going to use the actual data, we are going to give the data set a name. Yeah? And we are going to assign our data set to, to something. Uh, Irene is done. Just post your answers if you've done it. Uh, we say that R is a difficult software to learn, uh, but if you get it right from the beginning, uh, how things are being assigned, uh, next time we are now going to use data, real data from uh, your study or your objective. Uh, if you do, uh, you, you are a master student or you are undergraduate, it and you have some that what is happening to the coding uh Joan, uh, i can see Joan. you do uh Joan, there's a problem with you i saw Joan's code as a problem there it has disappeared Joan, check that that uh where's Joan? i saw Joan. so remove the Joan. Joan. Uh, to lie, remove the quotes, at the first quote at the beginning. My Joan, you have, you put some quotes, so there is a there is a quote which is not necessary there. So just say my underscore Joan without the quotation, and then at the end, Joan, you have not put a bracket, and you have put double quotes. 
and you have not uh, even you have written hobby you have not written hobby is equals to traveling you have just written hobby and then you have said traveling without saying hobby equals to traveling so uh, Joan, uh, can we confirm that Joan, you can redo that code and i uh, want to see that uh, you have done it correctly you have forgotten an equal sign you've forgotten the bracket at the end and uh, you have put a bracket which uh, was not needed. Does this single quote and double quotes have the same purpose in R? Well, I mean, R li likes double quotes, but single quotes sometimes work. Um, R just loves double quotes. See? So uh, uh, my favorite name is Abdi, Abdi Fatah. My favorite color, please put your own colors. You can say, my name is so-and-so. My favorite color is green. My age is 22. And then you say dollar sign, put age something. And you see uh, whether R is giving you the correct answer. Uh, I want to try and respond to some comments here. Uh, I don't know which comment is. How do we get... These ones, I think, are older messages. How do I run R Studio, please, Johan? <laughs> Johan, R Studio is a software which you must install on top of another one called R language. And you must go to your computer, click Start, search for R Studio in your computer, and open it. And it will see several windows there. Nora, add equal sign signs instead of. Yeah. So, dear all, as we begin this course, for, okay, somebody is putting, Joel is putting something. Can hear you loud and clear. I'm having issues with my microphone, Grace, that's fine. Um, please reshare the Google Drive. Joel is doing that. Okay. Very good. Now I want you to do the next one, this down one for for now. The next one we are introducing something called a data frame. And this is going to be more exciting because data frames is closer to what we are going to do um, in the data analysis that we are going to do. Right now, we are not using an existing data. We are not using a data that is existing. We are using, we are creating our own things. Uh, later on, we will have a data that has been collected using a questionnaire, and we are going to have a data that is organized in Excel, and then we bring it here. Now, we will not be doing our own, uh, creating our own data, but now we are creating our own data, and we are going to use a new command called data.frame. So now I want you to get, put X we can reuse this uh, object. Or if you don't like X, put your name. You can say Vincent is assigned to a data.frame. And inside data.frame, data frame will create a, a table like a data, like really Excel, like the real Excel. So if you call it data.frame, it will be a table with rows and columns, and it will be a table that will go into the global environment. So just call it X or whatever your name, assign it to a data.frame, put the months, and the months will be a container of June and July. So when you say months is, is June and July, and then you say day is a container with the 10 and 12 of. Month is a container of June, June and July. Day is a container of 10 and 12 of. And then you run X. Uh, Alicia. Alicia said my profile list name equals Alicia, age, 
<laughs> Elisha, age 29 cannot be is a number. So you don't put quotes. You don't put double quotes for, for a number. Just say 29. Thank you. I see Teresia is doing well. Martin has done it. Eunice, thank you. Nifata, well done. Elisha, ah, good. Uh -huh. Who else? So you are creating a table using command data.frame. And that is a beautiful thing because Joanne, please, Joanne, Joanne, there is a, Joanne, Joanne, you are the one harassing the R. R is very patient, but you see, out, outside the bracket, Joanne, you have put something, day, which is not there. Joanne is getting it now. Kyoko, uh, good. Very good. Yeah, so we want now to go to the next activity. My dollar sign name is not running. So, because you must run the first row first. So you run X, you run it, you highlight it and click run. And then you to just put X to display the results. Uh, so Rosalind, please run your X assignment again and follow it with X and then we run. If the dollar sign, sometimes you think it is a name, but if you hit the dollar sign, R is going to give you options. The moment you hit a dollar sign in R, it will, gi it will give you a list. For example, we are going to list the variables in a data set. R is going to help us when using the dollar sign. For example, if you want to, to produce age variable and age is in, inside a table, we will hit the dollar sign. Now we want to do another activity of sorting data. See, but we are going to set sort it using in the data frame. I see some questions. So let us do this one. Uh, I don't see any questions. Hi, Joel. Uh, I think we let me check. Yes. Check somebody may be distressed somewhere. We don't want to leave anyone behind because R is going to get more interesting. Okay, there's no other. So now we I uh, want no us questions. to do this one. Let mm -hmm. us create a data frame. Uh Salama what can you can you ask Salah Sal Salawa? Sela. Yeah. Let's let's, hear let, from let's uh, allow him to speak. Then Marcy has lost access to the one folder. Uh, Marcy, you are supposed to download the old, old folder into your computer. You are not going to work from uh, my my the drive my my Google Drive. That is my own drive. Uh, Sela Sela Mawit. So, yeah. So you see, your problem in Sela is your day. Look at day. You have said day. There's no, there's no, there's no equal sign. Day equal sign container. So there is something, there's a equal sign missing after day. Selamite. Yes. At what instances do you create a data frame and a matrix and a list? Um, depends on what you want to do. So a data frame, you want to create uh, a, a table which looks like what we call in surveys. Um, but a matrix is just something you want to create a matrix to, to work with. Uh, those are like temporary things that you can do in, a, in R. Uh, and a list, you can also do temporary things. You want to create a list of things. But the main one we are going to use a lot is data.frame. I'm still struggling, Irene. Irene, you have also left another comma. You said container June, July, then you put a bracket. 
then before the day you have missed a, a comma. Irene Okanda, you have missed a comma just before day. So for those of you who are getting that, let's do this one. Let's create an object called students. Kindly grant me access to one folder so that I can download, can see the rest except. Oh, so how come uh, Irene doesn't have a access? I wonder why Irene does not have access. Irene. The folder is not restricted. It's free to access as long as you get the link. Yeah, it's not restricted. Mm. But uh, I see, see some people having requests. This folder is not restricted. But I can give them people here. I see Charles. But I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. A good, a good, a good. <laughs> Felix, a good, I see you here. Yeah, so I can see some people here who have been uh, learning R. Good. Now, where are we? Uh, we are doing the sorting. Uh, we are doing the sorting. Eh? Yes, that's where the PowerPoint is at. Yeah, we are doing the sorting. So this sorting thing, eh? we have said we want to sort data. And I've said many times that this is data that we have just created. These are not data that uh, we have. We are just creating a data. So we, let's call it students. And let's create it as a data dot frame. And let's create names. So create a column called now this time. This time you are creating a real data set, like doing manual data entry. You are doing a manual data entry. You are creating a table using command data.frame. The first column, you want to call it names. The second column, you want to call it scores. So I want you to do that. So just call it students or some wherever, data.frame in bracket, put names and assign it to a container of Joy, Joan, and Mary, Ellie, four people. The first column. The second column, you want to call it, put a comma, you want to call it scores, and you want it to contain have contents 80, 70, 65, 59 and then run that one, then run students to display the results. Anybody who has done it? Nora missing quotation mark, thank you. And if you see somebody who has uh, put a comment there, uh, which you have an answer, please just respond to your colleagues. Uh, I know there are people here who can always assist others. So if you see somebody has put a comment there, don't wait for me to answer. If you have an answer, just, just good, good. Teresia, Teresia, uh, yes, I see you are very active. Abigail is very active. Uh, hmm. Yes, Crispin. Okay, let's go on, let's try to post. I want as many people to do it. Nora, 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 Nora. Nora, you have left some, what has Nora not done? Names, John. Nora, please check something there. If you have noticed something with Nora's command, she has posted it there. Please check for her. If your command is giving you problems, please post it there. 
then we can look at it. Uriela, or some people are now even putting their own family members, which is good. Uh, expected error, check a bracket somewhere. Uh, Festus, Sang, that's good. So uh, I can see several guys here who have done this. So you can actually see that uh, you have created a, a data set. By the way, are you able to see on the global environment anything called students? Joel. What about if you want to create uh, data frames, for example, with 10,000 students? <laughs> that is too much. That is too much. So uh, that is just a lot of data. So we need really software like an Excel sheet or a... Well, of course, when you go to collect your data, you can use any any software like maybe ODK or, or, or you can use a red, red cap can use anything else. Nora, you can paste your code there, so we help you out. Nora, your command is correct. So it should be saying command is correct. Nora, Nora, check your brackets. Thank you, Ishmael, for helping out the others. So we want to go on. Uh, uh, now, this is where the trouble is going to start. So we are going to introduce in the same command, we want to create another, let us create another object called student sorted. Student sorted, we want to assign it to the very, the, now this is what is going to happen. And this, I want you to be very, very careful right now. And I want you to look at the structure of this command, what it is doing here. This, com this thing called students, you had already created it. Whatever you are writing on the left-hand side is a new name. You are calling a new object called student started. But you are assigning it to the, the student, which is the, the one we created here. So the moment you see the name of a, a data set on the right hand side. This is an existing data set. But the existing data set is always put on the right, and the new name is put on the left. So students underscore sorted is a new name of students. Now the student is being assigned. So these two data sets are the same, except that this is a new name for the same data. Now, when you see a squared br bracket, when you see a squared bracket, it is called condition, conditional statement. So whatever you write in the bracket, you're giving it a condition. The first condition you're saying, the data set called student that we created early, order. You know, order means either ascending or decreasing. Order, put a bracket and put order. So what are you ordering? You want it to sort. Command for sorting is called order. Then what are we ordering? Now you can see that the variable is now called student dollar sign score. And this is how we are going to create, uh, let's say uh, our data set dot. The moment you hit, you write the data set name, you hit the dollar sign and a list of variables will come, will pop up and you choose the variable you want to sort. Like now we want to sort a variable called score and it is in a data set called student. So student dollar sign score is a variable in the data set. And that is what we are going to do. And then you put a comma, say decreasing is false. Decreasing is false means what? It means that we don't want decreasing, but we want increasing. You close the bracket, you put a comma, and then you close the bracket. Why not scores? It can be scores, depends on what you wrote here. Yeah, it can be, it should be scores, sorry. Scores, student, dollar sign. If you hit the dollar sign, the right name will pop up. 
what is the purpose of the comma before the last square bracket? This comma is just saying that uh, show everything on the on the data, on the data frame. Everything, you know, that comma is just saying show everything. And you're going to see in other examples where we are putting this comma at the beginning. So when we are putting it at the end, it is just telling us that do this and display everything, comma, bracket. Mercy is done. Um, good. Anybody else who has done it, who has sorted so that the scores are sorted? 59, 65, 70, 80. Richard is done. Very good. Very good. I see. Very good. Very good. More participants are doing it. Make sure that the columns course, course is sorted uh, from the smallest to the, the highest. You can also try and uh, change decreasing equals to true. And you see. See? You can also change decreasing equals to true. And uh, you see that, and you run it again. You run the two. Can you redo it? Run this, but change false to true. And then say student sorted. I want to see if now it is decree, uh, it's called what? Uh, descending order. Now, man, man. Anybody who has done decre uh, decreasing, is it, is it decreasing? Yes. Who is this? Joan. Yes, Joan, we are doing it now. That's good. Decreasing. Martin. Oh, Nora. Nora, 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 Nora. Nora, have you left a space at the end? Comma, that bracket. So anything inside a squared bracket is a condition. And uh, lastly, I want you to do the next activity, vectors. Just create a, uh, what is this? Create a, you can create a, So let me just uh, change this. Let's create uh, another Y. Let's just call it. Uh, I want us just to create. Let's create a container of. Uh, y and then put three to ten nine seven five. Run it. So the answer is going to be three to ten eight nine seven. And then I want you to sort this in decreasing order. So create this this temporary data and then sort it. So you say you create a new label. Now you rename it. So instead of Y you'll call it Y sorted, it's a new data. Y sorted is a name. Now once you assign it to sort, uh, you can say sort and then in bracket you are sorting what? The data file you want to sort is called Y, the old one. And then decreasing is true. So can you do that? It is also another way of sorting. So who has been able to sort why? If you do this, then we we are good. Please share your window. Oh, uh, somebody wants to see my R window. Uh, 
somebody wants to see my arrow window. So I've not even been typing for you, but uh, what I'm saying is that create an object and assign it to a container of, uh, what are the numbers? Numbers are 3 to 10. 3 to 10. Uh, 3 to 10, 8, 9, 7, 5. So I can put a hashtag and say sorting sorting data. So I have this, I can run it. I get the result on the console down here. And then now I come and do a sorted. I can create a variable called sorted, a label called sorted y, and I assign it to, uh, I assort it, sort. What are you sorting? I'm sorting Y. And what condition am I doing? I'm decreasing. I say this decreasing equals to true. And R is very kind. It will also suggest for you. So I, if I run this, I get, uh, then I just request to see what sorted is. When I write sorted and I run, I will have my results sorted. Oh, I I'd put 10.8, sorry. So I need to run it again. I sort and then I run it to display the results. Anybody who has done it? Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so I don't want us to do this. This but one you do at your own time. time. Um, these ones I want us to do at your own time. These are just more interesting things, but I want us to skip these things uh, and come to uh, this session. But I want to give you, um, I want us to like get two or three minutes or five minutes just to answer any questions. We are now going to load the actual data. So make sure that you see where you are Excel, the CSV file is, we want to import it now. And we want to go to the real R now. We are now going to leave uh, temporary data sets, things that we were creating on temporary basis. Now we want to go to the real uh, coding. You know, we are picking a data that exists, and then we are going to play around with the data. We are going to create uh, a library. We are going to see how to install packages. Um, and then now we will be ready now to real do the real data analysis. So, because uh, I can answer a few questions, uh, Joel, maybe if there is something to be, can ask a few people to comment. Okay, I will allow those ones who are raising their hands, let me unmute them. Um, and uh, we have Enoch and Abigail. Uh, I've unmuted you. Enoch. Uh, repeat the yes. Question. Joel? Uh, I see Please you are raising your hand. You can. Somebody is saying oh. share the PowerPoint. Oh, that was an old hand. Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, what about Abigail Muchoni? Okay, I think those were old hands. Okay. Um. Yes, Abigail. Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see someone somebody is asking for the, some, how do the PPT. Somebody saying, how, how do you clear? 
somebody saying how do you clear what i saw a comment nora edit someone is asking and... how do you uh, one delete information on council control no, l no. control l press control and l it will clear please share reshare the access to folders i don't know mass is still having a problem good I... now okay i can uh, let's try to answer all any questions uh which is an an answered Joel, are we ready to go? Yes, I don't see any other don't okay. see any other question. The others we have addressed. So we have basically taken a lot of time just uh, on session one, which has taken us quite a while because uh, we have to understand the background on how R works and how it's assigning uh, the renaming and uh, creating new objects putting contents inside the objects um, and how R is. Basically what you have done is uh, looking at an overview of it. So let us go on and now, uh, can we do a simple plot for the data we have created? <laughs> Relax, there is here, it's coming, um, it's coming. So we want to go to this session two, which is uh, importing the data into our uh, studio, uh, setting up a database location. And uh, the reason we want to set up a database location is because uh, we want to R to locate uh, some of the files we are doing. We create a folder uh, in our computer, and then we look for the, that location where our, our folder is in our, in our laptops. And R will be able to save things on that particular folder. It should be a really a folder where you have put your files. Like now, today, you have a folder called day one. If you have a folder where you are keeping your files, that is what we call a database location. And then reading data means importing data to R from outside sources. Then handling duplicates, we will look at duplicates, which are uh, genuine duplicates and false duplicates. So we call it true duplicates and um, false duplicates. Records can be duplicated in a data file. Uh, and then we have handling large data sets. You have 10,000 records, and uh, maybe what you want to view is only uh, five, five or 500 records, or you only want to view the first 10 records, or you want to view only the last 10 records, or you just want to view data of uh, males only or females only. That is called handling large data sets. Uh, and then there are commands like the structure. You know, uh, what is the structure of the variable? For example, is age a number or is it a string or is it a character? Or is data number, or is date numeric? What is date? That's called a structure of a variable. Class, you know, how is it classified? Then there's a command called view which is used to see the data. You want to view the data on your screen. You really want to see the table on your screen. So you use the command view, yeah? And uh, this command has given people problems because some people put capital V, some people small, small V. We want to see <laughs> how it works uh, when you are viewing. So this is the next activity. And uh, we want to create this location using the screen you see. Uh, to read data into R, you need to know the location of your files. So this is something we have to agree how we are going to locate your files. And uh, after we agree on this, uh, then we are going to use that. We are going to copy the location of that, that uh, your files. Sometimes if you want to know where you are working from and you type the word getting working directory, it is going to tell you the current folder where you have kept your project. If you write the word get working directory without anything in the bracket, R is going to tell you where you are, for, where you are working from. 
But if you set your working directory, then R will always be saving your files in this link here. For example, if I create a folder, if I have a, a link, this may be in my drive C and I have a folder called trainings and I have another folder called R, I have another folder called data. This is a folder path with a folder where I can keep my files. But remember, R is using forward slash. Things are forward, these strokes are forwarded. But when you copy your, your path, it must, the, this, 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 what do you call these things? When you call the, the slashes will be backwards. They will be going from right to left. So you have to change them so that they, they are, they are bending forward because that is the language of R. With the stator, it will bend backwards. And by the way, if we are, if I was to train stator, we will use the same slides and, but we change the language to stator. If I was to do Python, I will use the same, same slides to Python. But today, you know, some people are learning uh, Python at the same time, some people are learning Stata at the same time. So we can't ha all have similar slides. So I want you to type this thing, get working directory uh, in your... So let's go to R. Uh, <clears throat> we have some requests from some people. They would like to take a break. Okay. Yeah, so and then us... and then someone deleted the <laughs> deleted the whole uh the data in the in the in the uh, in the folder. So I'm uploading it again. Kindly stop deleting the just delete <laughs> Yeah, so just download it on your computer. Somebody doesn't yeah. want us to learn. Eh? <laughs> just download the data on your computer and. Uh, Somebody yeah, just use it and from deleted there. everything. This is this yes. is somebody who is a. Uh... But I'm uploading the data again. So for those who didn't it. have, yeah, just put day one, day two, or I can do it if uh, it's already there. It's already in in dates. Yeah, please. People here are deleting. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Please check who is deleting our files. Doc, should we save our work? Oh yes, somebody is saying we should save. So this are uh, this this will work, please. Uh, the what we need here is uh, can you save? Uh, there is a saving here, or you can say, click on save current document. Uh, there's a symbol here for saving. Uh, there's a symbol there for saving. There's also a symbol for saying save us. But if you click on the R script and you click save button here, just save it. Uh, just call it my scripts or my 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 first script, my scripts or my R script, whatever you want to call it. R scripts. These are what we call syntax in other softwares or codes or codes or programs. So once you save this, tomorrow when you open R, the first thing R will do, it will display the last, it will it will come with the, the scripts, but you can always uh, open another one. Just say file, open file. Tomorrow you just say file open and then you'll open your script. So Joel, we could take uh, maybe 15 minutes break and uh, I'll be here to answer questions. So you can you can unmute people and then uh, they can ask questions, but we are on 15 minutes break. Yes. Let's come back at, in 15 minutes. So 15.30, we should be back. 15.30, yeah, whatever, we, we, whichever place you are in 15 minutes, we are coming back, but I'll be here to answer questions. But uh, for those who are here, who don't want to take a break, you can go and read the next slides uh, or set up this working directory. You can, uh, you can actually, you can actually follow the slides so that when we are coming back, 
we are in the same place. Joel, so I'm happy to answer any questions as we are on break. Huh? Okay, let me see so if please, we have please uh, take a short break. Um, uh, just a moment. I don't know. I can't access my. Fortunately, Nora has a meeting at three, and there will be another one at four. <laughs> Nora, you will miss a lot, but uh, we are here. Uh, in case you want to reach out, we shall be around until Thursday, and we shall agree. Today, I'm a bit slow because uh, it's the first day and uh, we're using a very basic language here so that people can get interest in R. So we demystify this thing of R is difficult. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Please post any comments. Then let's come back at 3.30 3 East African time. Thanks. Joel. Yes. Is there anyone who wants to say anything? Just uh, I don't see any raised hands. Some four people have raised their hands. Can you unmute them? I don't know why I'm not accessing the the list of the people. I don't see them, but I can see. Who they are. There are four of them, so let me see. These are old hands, probably. I see Ronald, uh, Joan, uh, Daba. Those ones have their hands raised. And then Benjamin. Uh, okay, let me allow Daba to see if they are current. If it's an old hand, kind of lower. Check if you have raised your hand by mistake. Um, okay, we have... here. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Okay, Did thank you. you. Both I want to learn more before. about the before. data frame, um, especially if I need large data set for simulation. Uh, can I create, for example, about 5,000, for example, or 10,000? Data frame for for students, for example, using the score you mentioned before. You are asking how you can uh, use data frame to enter ten thousand records. Yeah, because if I need maybe manually, you want to enter ten thousand. You want to you want to add ten thousand records, or you are simulating. Yeah, me. I, I wanted to know maybe if I can create my data frame for this large number, uh, maybe simply without actually taking longer time. Do you have, a, I don't know, do you have a, like an external file, like Excel file with 10,000 records? No, 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 I don't have that. Just I'm asking if I can create that large uh, data uh, using actually the data frame you need, maybe. The only thing you can, I mean, it's it's very manual, you can do it, but can you imagine how many lines of records you write? So it's not very efficient. The only thing you can do if you're doing simulations, you can create, for example, a probability or like a probability function and ask R to give you random numbers. Let's say random numbers from one to 10,000 and assign it to a data frame. The next row, you ask it to randomly select, you know, maybe a, a random numbers in a normal distribution. And so if you were to assign, if you are to generate dummy data from a distribution and put them as, as records, then that is possible. It can do that. But the most, the best thing to do, I mean, if you are not, if you are not modeling or simulating and you, you collected the data, uh, in another software, you collected the data in uh, Home Care, ODK, or even a Google form. The best thing and more efficient way is to have that data in uh, an Excel format or a CSV format or a Stata format in a more structured way, and then you import it into R. 
But if you want to generate dummy, you know, dummy, we call them modeling records. You can do it using a, a random selection of variable that, numbers from a distribution. That is possible. Mm -hmm. We can discuss that. I can give you a, a I can give you uh, another document that you can do to generate, uh, you know, random numbers. But entering data ten thousand records in R is 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 not is not efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe for example, using the ex the example you gave us, for, like a student Joe John, like that is a, is a score. Maybe if we need, maybe for, for example, for 100 students with their score, if, is there any simple ways to do that rather than writing all these things as a, maybe for me? Because this takes time if we need actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't like it. That's why I'm saying that manually entering 10,000 records is not, is not efficient. What we want to learn now after the break is how best to do data analysis where the data is already collected in a, a tabular form using maybe, and the data is saved as Excel. Uh, and that is normally what majority of people do. They put their data in Excel format, or sometimes the, you can write a command, but you must know the data you want to put in every row. Uh, like in this row, I want to, in this data. You can write thousands of records using a, a macro, but it is still, at the end of the day, what you want is a table with rows and columns. So whichever way you think is efficient, I, I don't feel, I don't feel myself that is an efficient way of entering data manually. Uh, of course, that uh, software is like SPSS, you can actually take questionnaires and enter data manually up to 10,000 records. Things like Excel can enter up to those 10,000. Things like mobile applications can enter those records. And then the next thing you do is to read what that data into R and manipulate it the way you want now, uh, rather than manually entering data in, in, in R Studio. It's, it's, it's not something I would, I would, I would recommend. So what we want to do now, you'll find it more, more efficient than manually, I mean, manually entering the data. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to answer the questions. And remember when we are going to do analysis, uh, we normally assume that we create objectives, uh, research questions and objectives of what we want to analyze. And uh, remember that any statistical analysis has got uh, three levels. The univariable analysis, which we are calling descriptive statistics. We have the bivariable analysis, which we're calling, uh, you know, relation, assessing relationships between variables. And we have the third level, which we are calling the multivariable analysis, which is now uh, inferential. We are trying to assess the effect of multiple variables on a particular outcome or a dependent variable. So once you have proper objectives, uh, then the next thing is you must read about statistics, which statistics is used to, to do chi-square tests. What is the purpose of chi-square tests? What is the purpose of, uh, and we are going to talk about statistics a bit. Because for you now to analyze the data, you need to know statistics. Not, not just basic things. Uh, which one do I use to, call, to generate mean? And what is a mean? What is a median? What is a standard deviation? What is a correlation? What is regression? What is t-test? What does it do? How do? Why do we do it? Once we have those basics, then we are going to ask R now to execute for us those those analysis that we want to do. Can I ask a question? I have a question. Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, my name is Joanne. My name, please. Joanne, sorry to take yes, you back. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I have gone to the link that you shared. I'm currently using just add. I'm unable to use the studio. So what I what has happened is each time I want to use it, the setup dialog box keeps coming up and I have to run it next, next, next. And what is so Joanne, you sorry, you are saying you have installed R. Mm -hmm. so, so you I'm only have the you, have, you only have the the console. Yes, I only have the console and I'm able to have a script on it. However, I have also downloaded the studio, but each mm -hmm. time I want to open it, it keeps running. It keeps like, welcome to studio setup, to setup, next, 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 but it never opens. What does it say? It just says, welcome to the art studio setup, and then click next to continue, which I do until it runs everything, and then it never opens. Then it just shuts down. And uh, but if you search, time, if you if you search for R Studio in your in your programs, you don't see it in your start key. It's in my. I can see it in my downloads. However, every time I, I can see it, it's an app that you downloaded on your computer, and once you can I see it, it, you can see it as in as your download, right? Yes. Yes. And if you double click on it, mm -hmm. uh, if you close, if you close, you have to close the R. Have you have to R. save your work and close R. Then you you install R Studio. Yeah, because if 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 it is opened, I suspect that your R console is working and active, and then now you are installing R Studio. Why don't you try to save? Try to close R. R and then install studio again. So it says choose R installation. So R Studio requires an installed existing R. So I'll say use the machine's report 64 bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joan, maybe you move closer to the yeah, microphone. Uh, yeah, what? It has opened. Thank you. <laughs> Asante. Asante, thank you. I have a question. That's great. <laughs> That's okay. great. Yes, yes, Benjamin. Yes, Benjamin. Okay. Uh, I've been able to install the R, but uh, the this is my first lecture, and I don't really know where we are now. Like I just Please, came in with Benjamin. Benjamin, yes. what are you asking? I've I've installed the app. But studio. I, studio or yeah, R? R and R Studio, yes. And I've opened the R Studio. Uh, but I, open the studio. Yes, we are no. we are we are at R Studio. I have opened the studio. What are you seeing on the studio? How many windows are you seeing? Can I, you I, can you can you click on file? Okay, I've clicked on file. New script uh file. New file. New file, okay. Then R script. R script, yes. Yeah. So okay. Is on this that where script, we... on that script, that's where we are typing things. Huh? Yes. The so we, have is... said, we have said we put a hashtag. And okay. the hashtag is to put comments. Okay. Hashtag, then I write anything. Anything you can say. You can say sorting data. Okay, sorting For data. example, uh, Benjamin. Do I space? Can, can you see what is on my screen? Uh, yes. When I say the hashtag sorting data. Yes, yes, I can see it. Can you type this thing on this one? This one I violated. Why? Okay. Then put this less than equal sign and put a dash. Why assign to? Then put a C. Okay. And type these numbers: three two comma two three two ten nine eight five. Yeah, when I write sorting data, I put press enter B. Sorry. If I write hashtag sorting data, I press enter. No, no, that one is that is not a command. That one is just leave. That is just notes. Eh? 
but write yeah. go to another row and write y assigned to assign y is equals to c or y assigned to c okay i've done that and i like i like that I, like. I can't hear you. Highlight. Okay. I have highlighted. You can't, hear, you can't hear me. No, we can hear you clearly. I highlight can hear you and now. then uh, highlight and then click this command up there. Something called run. Okay. Run. You click run. And then down there you'll see blue colors. When you see blue, it means uh Everything is fine. If you see red, I, you I see yellow. This. I see yellow. Um, <laughs> I see blue, don't, blue, blue. We don't have yellow. Yeah. Uh, blue, blue. Blue, yeah. Then write the next line, sorted. Okay. Sorted. Write something, sorted underscore Y, and then write this command here. Okay, underscore Y. Assign less then dash sort, put a bracket, those things. Put Y. Uh, okay, sort. Open bracket. Uh, y decreasing. Y, 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 comma, decreasing equals to true means that you want it to, to the opposite. You want it to decrease. Okay. I've done then that. you highlight highlight that and run. You highlight that row. You click the line number like 28 or you just and then you click run. Okay. Ah, arrow. When you see on the console it's blue, it's saying if it is blue, then that things are okay. Uh yeah, red. Yeah. Red, red, not blue. Yeah. So why, why you, have you put this comma here? Uh, is red. Why? Check. Do you have a comma? Uh, do have you put this equal sign? This uh, a sign? Yes. Sort in bracket. Have you? Do you have two brackets? What is yes. the error message saying? Error object true not found. Object true not found. So you type decrease. Don't write true. Just type decreasing. Then put equal sign. It will it will give you whether true or false. Okay. When you when you write the equal sign, R will give you an option. Decreasing. Put equal sign. Uh, no option. Ah, really? Okay. No option. Let me start. Let me type again. I'll put type the entire thing again. Uh, I'm typing again. Why? Okay, I believe uh, we can. Uh, and, yeah, those you who can, are, you can read. Who are, I, can, uh, I can see. I can see decreasing equal to sort dot default. What? Sorry. Decreasing sort equal to sort dot default. Open bracket. Close bracket. So Benjamin, uh, <clears throat> you can just paste, copy that code and paste it on the chat so that we can help. Okay. 
but you must run the Y first. You see that Y command, somebody is telling you that you have to run these three things. You have to run all of them. You start with the first one, the second. you can highlight all of them. I've placed that in the chat. Okay. Yeah, but have you run the first one? The Y, y equals to container three, two, 10, eight, nine, seven, five. Yes. And the, it's blue. Yes. And if you type Y, if you type Y, and then you, you run. Only Y. Only Y, yes. What do you see on the console down there? Uh, one. In one. bracket. Three, two, ten, eight, nine, seven, five. Yes, no, that's correct. Then I think your problem is the second one. Uh, you need to run it again. I don't know whether you're missing. You're putting Y is decreasing equals. So can you just type decreasing equals to true? Just write the word true, capital. Okay. Because if you are working with the latest version of Studio, it should be suggesting for you. Yeah, you sure. Sorry? Let me run. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. blue. Sorted Y equals blue. Two. Yeah. Then now type 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 sorted Y. Whatever. Whatever name you used here. Type it again and highlight and run. Uh done. Done. Now we are going to the to the yeah, next it's okay. Okay, now create type a hashtag and then now people, all of us creating a working directory. This is the next this is uh, this is session two. Okay. Uh, you write a hashtag and then hashtag is just for your for your notes, and you can write those hashtags any place you like them. R will not R will not execute anything which is green. Will not will not act on anything which is green. Anything put with the hashtag green, it will run it. So I want us to go back to our PowerPoint. Uh, Benjamin. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. My PowerPoint, eh? Yes. So we are here, we are going to this place. Uh, now I want you to type the word get working directory, get WD in bracket. So just say, hashtag say, uh, identify, Hashtag identify current work, uh, current file location. So if you want to hashtag, then just write get WD, get working directory. Put a bracket without anything inside. It will it will identify for you the current file location. Just say get current working directory and then click run. You will see that it will tell you at the bottom of the console where your files are, where your current files are. It may not be, mine is in a folder. It is already telling me where my folders are. I would like you to post for me where your folders are. Just copy this and paste for me and show me where your folders are so that we check uh, how we are going to create a working directory. Excellent. So Eunice is that is a somebody is keeping their files in documents, um, and you can see that uh, the, the the yeah the the slashes are forward. Yeah. So we are going to locate our files, and you are going to see that. Uh, and then now let's go to the next row, like hashtag, 
Hashtag say setting, setting a working directory. Setting or setting a new working directory. So Francis is Joel is Francis there. So when we want to set a new working directory, that means we want to tell R to always save our work in the directory. And you can you can put your files now in the right place that you want. But let us just say that we, we know where it is. So I want you to copy that uh, that copy that part down there. And uh, just write the word set, set working directory, and then paste, 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 copy, copy the part, and then paste it here. But this is this is just if you don't want to to change it. Sometimes you want to change it, but you can put your folders where you want it, and then paste the path here and then when you say setting work then you highlight and run now you'll see that the the path is in green it means that it is it's in straight this setting so you have set we are working directory uh, please share with us the materials to practice more with the data set uh, the, the, the Benjamin, somebody is asking day one. So the folder called day one has what, what we want to do today. Uh, so Benjamin will set. So we have set up to so set your directory. This is how you set a working directory. All the things you are going to save, maybe is going to come that directory. Um, or sometimes you click where your folders are. Somebody is saying, please repeat. I've said that, uh, let me show you something. Uh, you can see that uh, I have, for example, I have, this is my folders. When I, this is the folder where I have put my files in a drive. I don't put my work in desktops. I put my work in somewhere, maybe drive C or E or somewhere. So if I look at the, the path where my files are, at the top here, I can see the folder where my, my data is. And I can always copy this these paths and paste in R. The only difference is that when you look at the, the path here, the, 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 the slashes are backward, but you can actually copy this this path and paste it there. But the easiest thing to do with R, you just put your files where you want them, and then type get work get wd get working directory. It will paste for you the folder down there, and then you say set working directory, set wd, and when you put a bracket you paste the, the path where your folders are there. So every time R will remember to save your work in the same folder. Hope that is clear. Uh, Rahab has done it. That's it. So once you do it, uh, we are going to learn how to bring data. I don't want us to do this, but just for your information that R can actually import any type of data, a text file, a CSV file, an Excel file, uh, and everything else. What I want you to look at in this, this screen here uh, is this structure of when we are going to bring in the data. You can see that whatever you write on the left is the new, is the object name, is the the new name that you want to call your, your, your data. What is on the right 
is the current name of the data. But what is on the left is what you want to call it. You may choose to call it the same name. So this is the object name. This is what we want to call the data. We assign it, and the command you write before is the command that will decide. If you write, if you say read RDS, it is going to import a CSV file, a comma separated file. If you write something like read Excel, it's going to import an Excel file. If you write uh, a command here for Stata, a command for SPSS, a command for it, the command that you write here will identify the type of data. And then whatever follows in bracket is the path where your data is, like file equals to. This is the path where your data is. You don't have to remember this because I'm going to show you a very easy way of uh, remembering uh, where your data is. So um, before we do that, I want us to go to the very interesting activity. Now I told you that R does not remember or does not know what you want to do. Every procedure that you want to do, you must install a package. And those packages are the ones that uh, help you to do so many things. These packages were developed by the community of R users. And anytime you are in uh, in online, you are using, a, you are having a Google, you can always search for a command online, but you might find that for the same procedure that you want to use, if you want to run a mean of a variable, the code, the, 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 the commands are not the same. Uh, and that is another challenge with R is that everybody can use a different package and produce the same answer. The only difference is that I have used a package which I found online and you have used a different one. Uh, and once that package was developed, when you develop a new package to do something, it, it is reviewed by a community of uh, people online. There is a, there's a team of people who develop who review they also publish those uh those packages and they also have uh, a reference those packages once the community of experts have approved the, the package it is made available to the anybody who wants to use it even you yourself you can develop a package it has to go through a review validation and then it is made available to everybody who wants to use it that is why R is so dynamic. It can do everything. Because today, you want to do something that no one else has done. Then you do it, develop a package. But whoever wants to do what you have done must install the package. So we are going to go through the process of installing packages. There are some packages that we know uh, are going to help you. And uh, there are some of them that you have to know. For example, if you want to know the packages that are installed in your, in your R, you just type the word library bracket. I want you to do that. Um, so just go to your R studio and type hashtag, uh, uh, what do we want to do? We want to say, to see all packages, eh? to see, to see all packages installed in my studio. In my studio, just say, like, just type the word library. Library is just to check what is in the library. You just say without, you just put a bracket without, without anything. It means that you are not specifying anything you just want R to do everything then you run when you run it will give you a list of all the packages that you have installed so you can see i have installed so many things uh some of them i installed many 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 months ago <laughs> but uh 
I'm going to give you a list of packages that, and this is the exercise you're going to do a lot. So we are going to go back to, go back up there, make sure that you go back to your script. It is a window down up there, go back to your script. Um, I want you to write hashtag and say installing relevant packages. Installing relevant packages. Make sure your internet is stable because we want to install a series of packages. And the first package I want us to install, we are in slide number 30. It's called, uh, let me just give you the list. Foreign, uh, it's called foreign. So I want you to type install, install dot packages, and then write the word foreign in bracket. Foreign. Uh, you can put another, you can actually install the first one. Install a package called foreign. And what does foreign do? Uh, let me show you what it does. Foreign package was developed by somebody. And this foreign package help us to do that. Joel, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. We are on the yeah, so, package. So, yeah, the foreign package was uh, in, was was developed to help us import uh, packages like SAS, Data, MATLAB, and SPSS. But somebody else has developed another one called Haven. And this one also uh, was developed after foreign, and it was also developed to import files. But specifically, whoever developed this uh, was trying to import files that are got you know, this word read underscore sans, read underscore uh, sub. So it also imports certain types of data with this format. But the, the very interesting uh, package that I will never want you to forget is this deep layer package. Anytime you open your R, make sure that this package is running. Because this package called deep layer has been extensively used to manipulate data, data cleaning, data manipulation, data visualization. It is a package that is helping you um, to change the data set. There's another one, this one called read Excel. This one uh, is a package that helps you to import specifically Excel file. But remember, yeah, remember that Foreign and Haven help you to import these commercial softwares, but Read Excel help you to ex import Excel. This one called Read R is helping you to import a CSV file. This is what we are going to use because we are having a CSV file. If we are going to import Excel, write read Excel, read, read Excel. Uh, there's another one called Rio. Again, somebody developed this to import uh, some variety of formats. Somebody also developed another one called Crayon. Uh, this one is used, is intended for those who wish to use in, in, in S colors. You know. It's also helpful for some other colors, but I will give you several others to install. So the activity I want you to do now, hashtag installing packages. I want you to type all these things in your R script. I want you to type, let's start with the first one, but you can do all of them if you are smart. Just highlight, just type, just start and say install dot packages. Don't say installed, just install. It means you want to install. And the R will give you a bracket. Put the name of the package you want to install. For example, type the word foreign. Foreign. And then I want you to highlight and run. Make sure your internet is working. And 
Uh, you will see so many things here, down here. May some people will see red. Those red ones does not mean that uh, you are having a problem. It is just telling you that uh, it is installing something. So don't worry about red colors when you are installing a package. Uh, finally, it will give you an answer. Foreign package successfully unpacked. I want to see who has done it. Who has installed the package called foreign? Oh, too fast. Alpha. Who has done it? Who has installed package? Make sure your internet is there. I see foreign done. Done. Please proceed to the next one. Uh, install all of this. Go to go do all of them, please. I want to see if you have installed, you, you say. Dennis installed. Uh, let's do the rest. Let's let's install Haven, deeply read Excel, read R. Let's install all this because they're going to help us to manipulate the data. So let's go and install these ones. Haven. So we are going to install Haven. Install dot, you choose R is going to Haven. Once you see Haven, the moment R is suggesting for you these things, then you know that you're writing something which is okay. The moment R is not giving you a suggestion, you must be suspicious. But it's not like you are wrong, but it's not suggesting for you anything. It means that something might be uh, missing. So install, install packages, highlight and run. Then install, the next one is deep layer, which is very important. Need to deploy the EP. Sometimes deploy will give you problems. Let's see. Deploy sometimes misbehave. Even if deploy has refused, you just type it there. Deploy. If the player is not behaving, you can type to see it here. If the player is not working, who has not seen the player cage? It is not suggesting for you the play. You can go to the, the directory environment and click install. You can go down here. This, this is also another place for installing. You click packages, you have files, plots, packages. There's a place called install. You can click install, and then you'll get a window where you can type the word deep layer. Deep layer, and you will see it uh, among the lists. Once you see it, click install. If you have installed deep layer, then I know we are together. Yeah, deep layer, reader, yeah. If it is in use, uh, if you have installed deeply, then I know we are together. Let's see who has done it. Was it was installed deeply? Huh? Alpha. Anybody was sorry. I have installed the DPF. That is who, Benjamin? Yeah, Benjamin. Benjamin, now you, you are allowed to speak. You, you Your microphone should not be closed, eh? Sorry, I didn't so get Benja it. Benjamin, talk as much, eh, because now we have allowed you to talk. Uh, 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 then uh, uh, install read.
Um, I think uh, we lost we lost him. Just a moment. He's getting back. Yes, just a second, uh, the facilitator is coming back. We want so now that uh, you've done this, I want you now to write write this again. So you you repeat the whole process, but now this time you write library. So you say loading packages into the library. You say loading hashtag loading packages into the library. So just write hashtag. Loading packages. So once you install the package, you need to install and uh, load the packages into the library. Not 
loading packages into the session. So you just copy the same thing. You can copy paste. You can copy paste. Sorry. You can copy paste, but change instead of this change install, just change the word to library. So just write library. For example, write library and then put the first one. Just write library and then say foreign. And then write library, put the next one, have you So anytime you'll install, you'll, you'll be working with R, you'll be loading this library. Uh, whether you install, you can choose to install first and then run the library. But if you run the library without installing, R must install. It will automatically install first. So I want you to put load all these packages into the session, deep layer. You can see that uh, when you load, when you write the library, there is no brackets. You're not, you not putting brackets. Um, library. Uh, read Excel. Library. Library. Rio. <clears throat> Benja, uh, do we have somebody who can speak? At least one person. Uh, yeah, let me check. Uh, I see we have three yeah, raised hands. Person. Yes, let someone speak. Arfa Umaru, you have a raised hand. Uh, just unmute. Steven? Hey, um, so uh, he's not speaking, oh, so let's go to Akuru, Steven. Anybody, uh, I want to hear anybody. Yeah, uh, great session there, Vincent. Uh, but is it possible I can have a follow on your uh, R Studio window? Because I find it easy that way. Sorry. I uh, I'm not able to see your R Studio window. Oh uh, why? Okay, let me let me. Because it's uh, you are in presentation, yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, now I can see. Yeah, thank you. So I want you to write library for a library heaven, library this, all this, and then you highlight all of them, and then you click run. It will load all the packages, uh, uh, and then once you see everything is blue, then you know everything is fine. Now I want us to. Mine is red. What is red? The Rio. Which package? The library. Library. No library, but which package? You know, library is a command. So when you write library in bracket, uh, you are writing a particular package. Which will which package is not is showing red? I highlighted four. You know, I light one at a time. Probably you will see the one with the problem. I light one and run. When you see blue, right, I light the next one. Uh, like mine is saying, Rio was built under R version 4.3.3. Uh, then you run the player. Are you, are you seeing anything?
Who is that, Benjamin? He's okay now. He's okay. Thank you. It's, it's bluish, yeah? Yeah, the blue. Yeah. Now, I want us now to uh, ha put a hashtag. Oh, oh Vincent, yes. that's yes, a small yes. question. Yeah. yeah. You you said R cannot, uh, what do you call it? Cannot perform the green or cannot read anything in green. Could there be a reason or do you have uh, some explanation on why it cannot read anything on green? I mean, for, for, for good reason that those things in green that you write hashtag and then you type green, those are comments. Those are not expected that they are, they are commands. So when you say, uh, these are my notes, or you're saying this is my, my class for today, uh, basically what is in green is meant to be your notes. So when R sees a green, anything after the hashtag and it's green, it will just, even if you highlight it, you will not see a result. That's what we mean. It is they are, they are notes which are not meant to be executed. Uh, like okay. anything Thank following you. a hashtag is just your comments, and you can put as many comments. Uh, the more green comments you have in your in your programming, the better. That means you are yeah. a very good programmer, and you are explaining everything. Even if, for example, I've written library for it, and I put a hashtag after it, and I say. This this package you can even put a comment and say this package uh, imports uh, special data sets. See special data sets, and I put a hashtag after every row. You can see the hashtag is followed by green. So whatever, even if I run it with a hashtag there, it will still do me something. But the the comment there will just be for purpose of explaining your notes. So I want us to write a hashtag and say importing. Uh, I have a importing question. Depression data set. Yes. Sorry, Vincent. Okay. So I wanted to ask, uh, so far so good, you're good. And thank you for that. But I wanted to ask, are we supposed to be installing these packages every other time you're starting a new project? Or once you install uh, now, you you'll never install yeah. them again. You don't, yeah. So when you install them, you don't have to install them again. However, you must run the libraries. Because once okay. I install foreign, it is already mm -hmm. been there. So anytime I will open my pack, my 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 R, mm -hmm. R will remember that I have installed the package. But before I use that session, any session, new session, I must run a library. Okay. The good thing with the library is that if, for example, there is a, a, a software that you have not installed, package, Al will, will, will try to install it first. Yeah. But if you try to do a procedure and you're saying, they're telling you this, this procedure cannot be run because you have not installed a package, you will have to come back and install. So... And there's nothing wrong with installing all the time. I mean, it's just to be, but you don't have to. Once you know, if, if you are aware that I had installed this one, then you just run the library. Library is to make sure it is that package is available for use in the in the, in the session. Oh, thank you, thank clear. you. Very clear, thank you. And I see Guitari's hand is up. Guitari? The one, yeah, it's the her, one. It's her, it's, oh. it's her. Yeah. Sorry, She's sorry. The same. Yeah. Okay. Now I want us to write a hashtag and write importing, importing a data set, importing a CSV, CSV file data set called. The data set I want us to call it is called synthetic. Syn synthetic. Our data set is called synthetic. Syn syn synthetic. Synthetic. The data set is called synthet synthetic. Underscore.
Punto. Depression. Depression. Then, sorry. The data set I want us to import is called underscore missing underscore data. Underscore missing underscore data. So there's a file, there's an Excel, there's a file called uh, synthetic depression underscore missing underscore data. And I want you to make sure that that data, you can see it in your folders. Make sure you look at day one data set. Open day one, open your folders and make sure day one, there's a data set called synthetic and I can put it on the chart. For some of you, this data set called uh, synthetic. The reason we are calling it missing is that we have we have put very bad things inside. We have put some variables. We have put uh, we have manipulated the data to look that to to, to look bad. There are two of them by the same name. Uh, there is no, no there is. There is one called synthetic underscore depression underscore missing. It, it has the word missing. I have just put it there. I've just put it on your chart. You can install it. Yes, uh, Alpha. I think it's an old hand. Uh... An old hand. So Alpha, you can see. This, this is my screen. This is my screen. Can you see? that uh, I have several folders here, right? You can see this file is called, Joel, you can see this? Yes. So make sure that you can go to the one folder uh, and check that the file is there. The file is there. Who has seen that for who has seen that file? Let me see a few people. Who has seen a file called depression, synthetic depression underscore missing? Yes, most of them are raising their hand. It's okay. But it's good. And you can even uh, you can even double click on it. You can even double click on it. Can you double click on it? Uh, you will see that there are things we have we have put some things there which look funny. For example, you will find that uh, under sex. Let me just uh, show you this. You will notice that under sex, we have put some val values which are missing. We have I have just removed it. The original data is the one without missing, but I've just put some things. Uh, you can see under sex, there are some things which are missing. And uh, under income time one, there is NA, means that it is something is missing. So we have my, we have messed up with this data so that you can see how to address missing. So what we are going to do now is to try and import this data. It has got several errors, which we have deliberately put there, including duplicates. Yeah. So this is the data that we want to import. So I want us to import this data into R. I want us to bring this data into R. Where's my R studio? And I want to show you a simpler way of getting the codes so that uh, we don't uh, waste a lot of time. So I want you to click on file. Can click on file I don't know why my name is here. I want you to click on file and then click import data set.
and and then you will see a list. The first one is a text file. The second one is a, C, a read R from text, read R. The next one is Excel. The next one is SPSS. I want you to pick the second one, which is called read from text, read R. That is a, that is a procedure of importing a CSV file. But if you have an Excel file, you'll pick Excel. Can you pick the second one and click on it? Uh, Joel, is somebody there to confirm this? Yes, Please. we can see that. Whose uh, microphone is on? One of the students. Yeah, allow a few people to be be able to speak. Yeah, uh, Benjamin, can you maybe say something? Benjamin, uh, you are here, and uh, the other lady. We can so that we communicate. Yeah, Wendy? I'm there. I'm there. Your uh, name is Wendy Guitari. Wendy, now you will be speaking, and Benjamin, and then others will. So, are you seeing this screen, Wendy? Yes, I can see that. Then, then there is browse. You click browse, and then I want you to browse, and then go to your computer, your folder, and double click on day one. Uh, day one, there is a folder called datasets. And then I want you to locate a data set called the synthetic depression missing data. Wendy, have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it and I've clicked. I'm at open. I've clicked it now there at open. Yeah, you click open and uh, <clears throat> I want you to click open and uh, you wait. So what, what essentially R is doing, R is trying to ensure that the pack, right package was installed. And then the first thing R does is to view, show you a preview of it. And anyone who is able to see uh, a table, uh, I want to confirm that people can see a table. Don't go, don't do anything, but I want you to confirm that there's a table on your screen. Yeah, I can see data preview and then now the table being displayed on table, the screen right? now. Nice. Yeah. And if you look at the at the at the bottom right, are you seeing some command, a code preview command that is saying library, uh, library reader, and then it's giving a name of a data set, synthetic mm -hmm. depression, missing data, read CSV. Are you seeing that? Yes. And then it, it is putting the path where my file is, day one, day one, whatever the path, and then it is putting it in green color. And then mm -hmm. it is ending by another command called view synthetic view. depression. Are you seeing that? Yes. So I want you guys to copy uh, copy the copy the whole of this code here. Copy we have it. some people who are lost. So, so um, are you are you saying we should just copy that part and not say import? Because me, I went through the import. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm saying don't import because I just want you to. Or eventually you can import, but I want you to make sure this code is copied because okay. it, you will always remember. You can import. That's what we want to do. But we want you to see that code, uh, and I want you to most. paste. I want you to paste that code in the in the in the in the script. Who is lost? Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin, where are you? I I just downloaded the 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 file from the comment section now. But you downloaded from the file called missing. The synthetic depression missing. Yeah. So then, then go to go to click file in your R Studio. Click file and then click file in uh, import data set. Can you see that? Click click file. A uh, click file. Uh, lo locate import data set on the left. Import. In your R Studio window. Yes, in the R studio. 
Are you seeing file import data set? No, no. You can't see file. You can't see okay, all okay, this. Okay, okay. I've seen import data set. Then you have a list. Are you seeing a list? Yes. The first one is from text base. Leave that one alone. The next one. Text range add. Click that. Click that. Okay. What are you seeing? Preparing data import requires an updated version. Then there's a yeah, there's a place called browse. The right. Yes. Click that. Okay. It takes you to your folders, right? Is downloading. Downloading. Sorry? Is that download. Yes. Is that taking now the... locate locate the file you just downloaded. The one called missing. Whether you picked it from a download, ideally you should save your files in a good uh, the path where you created, so that your files are not scattered everywhere. Yes, but so I, I can't have... find it here. Oh, I can you see the folder. Stop your downloads. Sir? The file you downloaded, you know where it is. Okay, I've seen it. So click on it. Select. Yes. And click open. Okay. Yes, I have it now. What's next? I click import, right? It's like a table. It's like a table. Yes. Yes, it will be showing you like it's a table, but uh, in a way, but just hold on there. Okay, I have imported and I have a table. Uh, Vincent? I think he's trying to share his screen. Okay. Okay. So um Benjamin, I hope you have been able to before you import, I hope you copy it. We were talking about you copy that um that library, the code preview, where you get the code preview. Come again. Uh you copied that code preview? Not yet. Uh, okay. Well, you already clicked um, import. 
Yes, I've clicked it, but okay. But I didn't copy the preview. Okay, just a moment. He's coming back. Uh... Okay, thank you. And then, um, try to type in the the data set. Yes. Right, str str is to see the structure when you then try click run and tell me what you see str then put the data name Data set name. What do you see? Uh, yes. We have the number, the structure, the data types, whether they are number, whether they are numeric or they are characters like strings. Yeah. So for the ID, it is numeric, why yeah. the sex is is string. Characters. I see if we lost Vincent again. Okay. they are and for free time we are going to find them but i wanted to show you i wanted to show you uh how for how for example you can uh, identify a variable so i want you to write for example str write a str but now i want you to write only one variable str just write uh, synthetic uh, Put uh, that put the the variable name and then hit the dollar sign. Just write str in bracket synthetic data missing that then hit the dollar sign. And uh, for example, choose the variable you want to. Are you able to see that? Yes, sir. If you just yes. write one, you can see it. Yes. Okay. Uh, just to end, yeah. So we, you are going to follow the slides. I'm sorry about the disruptions. But to end the class, maybe on a high note, can you click on, can you type the word hist histogram? Just type the word hist, hist, and write, type the, the data set name, and then uh, the dollar sign, and then put age. Just write hist. Hist is a short for histogram, it's a graph. And then yeah, when you hit the when you write the data set name and you hit the dot sorry. Sorry. Highlight and run. What do you see on the right? 
There is a histogram. Yeah, 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 exactly. Who can see anything? There is a histogram. I can see, I can see a histogram. Yeah, yeah. histogram, right? Yeah. So in the same code, after after age, and then just write C O L like color. C O L is for color. Put a color. Put any color in bracket. Put something like green. Just write call equals or C O L equals. It will it will bring your color and then highlight. See, and what do you see? Do you see a color? Yeah, change the color to your favorite color. Put your favorite color. Uh, men, boys or men, we can put blue uh, or, or put another color. Uh, put blue. Can put blue. Run and see that the histogram is changing color. And then, uh, lastly, I want you to type the word table, command table and then hit the dollar sign and put sex. Just table, table, just command table, and then put the depression, hit the dollar sign and, and the, the number. Who has seen anything? Yes. We have Why a total not? number of females and male. Yeah. I can see 50, 40 female and 49. 4,954 yeah. male. Yeah, 140 male. And, and, yes, so, and uh, if you now say some or some summary, uh, can you use the command summary on the synthetic data? Hit the dollar sign and write age, summary of age. Summary is another command that does a summary. What do you see, age? We had the summary statistics, the minimum first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and maximum. What is the average age? The average is 44.75. OK. Can you find for me the summary for uh, income in time, first income, time one? Hit the dollar sign, say. The income time one, income T1. It is the average income in the first time. Getting this error while running Instagram. Bigger margin is too large. Yes, oh, we have the mean income 34420. Good. Yeah, so my colleagues, uh, we have to stop because it is five o'clock. Um, tomorrow we are going to explore this. Now we are going to get into the the nitty gritty of this. And uh, uh, we are going to continue from there. Please save your R script. And if you have time, please go through the PowerPoint that we have. After you finish the PowerPoint, going through the PowerPoint for today, you can go to the next PowerPoint for day one which is about data wrangling. If you can practice more about it, you can see. However, if you want to see the, the codes, if you want to see commands that we have used today, uh, under day one, there is, a, there is something called tutorials. Let me show you. If you
go to your folders. Can you see something called tutorial? see anything yeah, yeah yeah are you seeing anything no your 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 screen is blank hello you're not projecting you're not projecting my screen is still blank Okay. Yes. Yes, I have a question. Okay, sorry about the this in this Zoom we will resolve it. But uh, what I'm saying is that when you check, you will see the R script for today. I Are have a question. Here? Sorry. I have a question. Yeah, it's called it's called tutorials. When you double click on tutorials, you will see Are some you... of the are you referring to the one in D1? Yes. Are you referring to the one in D1? Yes. So under D1 data sets, you will see a file called tutorials. Can you hear? Yes, we can see that file. Tutorials. Yeah. yeah, so that tutorials file is dot uh, LMD. But it's yes, that file yes, when you will open it, when you'll open it, it's going to give you uh like some of the codes that we have used today. So you can also uh, check on the commands that uh, I've tried to write, write down. And uh, but tomorrow we shall continue with this class. Uh sorry about the disruptions of the Zoom. I don't know whether it's a Zoom disruption or it is internet. Because if you take a few comments as we wind up, sorry, we have passed the time. Uh, any final comments, uh, especially uh, what we have learned today? Uh, so I think uh, you can. Thank you. We can Thank stop you, the Mr. recording Mr. and then we have people few things. Thank you. Uh, any comments, final words? Okay. Uh, if then we I don't have comment. any more comments. Uh, I see Mary and Rosalind. Uh, uh, I, I have a question. Yes, I've allowed them to speak. Yeah, let's allow people. Yes, please to go ahead. Find up. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Rose, Rose it was yes, yeah, it was a wonderful training. I the I the observation I have is the data set you are asking us to work with as our exercises is in TXT file. Can we see use it in that format? 
or we should relocate it to an Excel sheet or CSV sheet? No, the one, the one, the one in the folder. So in the one in the folder, I have just put it. The one called missing, with the missing. I it, I've just. It is in a comma separate. It is an Excel comma separated file. So it's not a real Excel, but it is a CSV file. So when you import okay, it no. in R, you have to. Oh, you are saying the. Tutorials. the... The tutorial, so uh, don't use it as a text file. Just right click on it. Uh, you right click. Tutorial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you right click the tutorial and say, op you open with the R Studio. So you just right click oh. and say, op open with R. Sorry, it was in a wrong format. Just say, open okay. with R Studio. Okay. Then my last question is, um, is there a different a difference between what you have done today and a uh, fitting of data? Fit, fitting of data. Yes. Fitting the data now. We we have started to fit data. We have started to bring data into R, and now we tomorrow we are going to work on the data. We are going to sort out the missing data. We are going to sort out uh, categorizing the data from age. We are going to create two categories. Those who are under five, we are going to look at the prevalence of depression, what factors influence depression. We are going to do some chi-square tests. Uh, we are Then we are going to fit the, uh, fitting the data is a language we use when we run regression. Okay. So we are going to do, do some things like that. That is the word fitting data is used when we are running them. We are running some statistics. Okay. Uh, do we have any other person with a question? I see uh, Mary, but he, she's not talking. Uh, so I maybe think it it's uh, an old Sorry. hand. Sorry. Uh, uh, I see Oma Simple. Uh, you can speak. I have unmuted. You can unmute. Uh, thank Thanks, Joel. Uh, 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 and and uh, the presenter. Uh, when I was trying to run the, the histogram, then I, I got the error. Showing that error in plot the new figure margins too large. And I tried to figure it out and failed mm -hmm. totally. I don't know what could be the error. Thank you. Yeah, so you can send that those I'm um, still available. Uh I don't know how best we can do this, Joel. But I'm still available if people have specific comments. Um, I think we lost Vincent again. Uh, kindly text the error you got on the chat over. All right, I've, I've done that. Thank you. Okay, could you really send again? Because we seem not to see it. All right. Rosalind, uh, you have a, a comment? I think Rosalind is am, an old hand. I am done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I think uh, we are past time. And uh, sorry for the Zoom disruptions. We'll try to establish what the issue is. Uh, but I want to thank you very much for the patience. Uh, it's the first day with R. Uh, please save your script. And if you want to see the do files that we, the script files that we use today, you can go to tutorials and check on them. You can follow my PowerPoint slides uh, for your, uh, you know, your individual training. And if you have something that is disturbing you, 
you can text me on WhatsApp uh, or you can write me an email at bwere at phrc.org. Uh, we can continue this dialogue between today and tomorrow. We shall revisit it, what we have discussed today a bit, and then we shall get into manipulating data and running some analysis of the depression data set. Uh, yes. Nifara, uh, Nif Andrew. Yes, sir, please. I was trying to say that if you can put the email on the chat, that would be better. Yes, so we don't yes. Them in your email. Thank you. And then for us we, in Nigeria, we don't have your WhatsApp number. So there was no way, there's no way we can hey, send my, you WhatsApp. My, my WhatsApp number is this one on the chat. So help this us put it on the chat, please. Thank you. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We you see your contacts. Yeah, so those are my contacts. Um, we can already, uh, even within the WhatsApp group, I was added there. Uh, if you're there, then uh, I know there are people who are not on WhatsApp because the WhatsApp is full. Probably we'll, we'll need another WhatsApp or a Telegram somewhere. That's the WhatsApp number, that's my number. And the notes have been shared. Uh, uh, day one, just go to day one folder, notes are there. PowerPoint, go follow my PowerPoint from the beginning to the end, introduction. If you have time, please go to the PowerPoint number two, which is data wrangling and cleaning, and uh, just do the exercises which are there. Uh, and tomorrow we shall do it. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you very much, Vincent, for your time today. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. And kindly uh, uh, go through what we learned today so that maybe by tomorrow uh, we have resolved all the issues we are running on. Uh, thank you very much and have a good afternoon to you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.